I always think every time, you know, anytime I've ever, you know, I, I don't talk much shit online, but anytime I have, I've ever, I've always tried to talk shit on something that I know. <laughs> I like to have some sort of backing. Yeah, just yeah. something. Or, and it's like when people, if people talk shit on something like your band or your music or what you, you, you know, like what you're creating, you're like, the next post you make better be your band's song. Right. Like, I better. And it better fucking rock so hard. It better blow my mind. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff. It's like I know. in the old days, you you had no outlet to tell people how shitty they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just. It's, one day you were able to tell people how shitty they were and that was it like then you can like walk away you can just put it down and then yeah, See you walk, later. yeah walk away well, from it I never it. got that I, I've like I mean listen I've had plenty of bad meals mm -hmm. I've gone to shows that I wasn't exactly happy about yeah but I've never felt inclined yeah. to go <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's like having a like, I, okay I went to a Lou Reed show I okay. was fucking bombed on it and he Died not that long after it. Yeah, and I was like, I'm never gonna get to go to another one to see if maybe that was just a bad one, which it but, probably was. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, but he was doing dumb shit. He he wouldn't like, and I was sober at the time, but he wouldn't let the bar be open while he was playing. Too much temptation. Or, or I guess he didn't want people over there trying to get beer while he was trying oh. to play, or they wanted to pay attention to him or something, whatever. So then, and then at one point he started playing Venus and Furs, like the mm -hmm. Velvet song, and then he stopped and goes, I thought you would know that, but I can't play it because of Don't do that. rights or whatever, this and that. And they started bitching about that stuff. And I was like, oh my God, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, just keep it going. And then he was just playing a bunch of new stuff that was just like ocean music that I was going to fall asleep to. And it was like, come on. Obviously, we're all here because we want to hear Lou Reed's fucking hits. Well, that's yeah. a trick, too, right? Like, yeah. You know, you get in. I, I think a lot of bands they get into this spot in their career where, you know, as a, as an artist, you know, and I use the term loosely, but as an artist, you want to be someone who you know is constantly doing something that makes people happy or that that, that people want to hear. But, sort of, but then yeah, yeah, yeah on the other you side, you have to remember like <laughs> there's a reason you got there to the point you are in the first place, yeah. and they want to hear that too. Right. And then, you know, not everybody can be like the Foo Fighters and play three hours worth of, of shit hits. That people want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I've heard heard him say that before. He's like, yeah. hit after hit after hit. It's like it actually really is. Yeah, like the Eagles. <laughs> you know, like you can hate the Eagles, but you go to see the Eagles, guarantee every song you know. You yeah. know every song. Dude, I I did I went to Tom Petty yeah, like a few times thing. and it is. And you're like, I didn't even know I knew that song. Uh -huh. And I know it, and I know every word to it. Yeah, and yeah, and but and it's exciting for that. And I'm not asking for that either, though. It's just more or less like play one, play a few that are recognizable, and yeah. then sprinkle in what you're doing I in will, between. I'll admit to you, I would know every song at a Cat Stevens concert. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, like there's certain <laughs> yeah. ones you're just like it's Sufjans or, uh, <laughs> or or an old cat. Yeah, it's classic cat. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's hard right now because I don't ever I don't see anybody doing anything that anybody's gonna remember, you know, like <laughs> yeah, 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 anymore. Yeah. I went the other night, two nights ago. I went and saw um, they, you know, Dolby's got this thing called Dolby Vision now, and it's like this crazy process where they can make you know like the image of stuff, even if it was like old stuff, they can make it look like incredible, like it never could have looked before because they didn't have the technology, yeah, right? Yeah. And I saw. A Dolby Vision version of Apocalypse Now, like that final oh, cut that just came out. All right, and I promise I have a point, but I'm watching that movie, and the whole time I'm thinking, knowing about the making of that movie, how it was, you know, two hundred over two hundred days of shooting, like damn, yeah, Francis, <laughs> and then they were in the Philippine jungle, and you know, fucking. Martin Sheen had a heart attack during the fucking filming, <laughs> and you know, like you know Francis Coppola put in three million of his own dollars because he wanted to make it so bad like this dude had that movie in him yeah like, yeah yeah like yeah. Tr trying to rip out of his chest like an alien yeah and he had to do it like who's who's that now who has that like f driving force to make art 
Only if it's going to get enough likes on your Instagram. Yeah. Or you can sell a doll yeah. with it and, yeah. a, you know, a lunchbox and a fucking <laughs> Halloween costume. Merchandising. <laughs> Space balls. Yeah. You're yeah. just like, you got to be kidding me. Like, yeah. it's, there's got to be something out there that, like, is inspiring people. You know, like, I was hoping that this current presidency would inspire people to whether or not you like it. You know, you like what's going on or don't like what's going on. You know, like, there was a point when people were actually paying attention to what the fuck was going on besides themselves. And they would write this music, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. either, like, said how happy they were about it or how much they hated it. And, like, now they just talk fucking... Cameras were invented to point at other shit. Yeah, not at not yourself. This way. Yeah. <laughs> Toward you. So it's like... Just, That's hilarious. You know, like, yeah, the lenses have always been to be on... be a viewfinder. You had to look in at something. <laughs> not now. So everybody's like... It's like the self-absorbed bullshit. And oh, like, man, it's, what's yeah. cool about that? Like... That's, uh, nothing. <laughs> that's not going to get you what you want. That's just going to make people think you're an asshole. I don't know. That's my opinion. Welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast. I'm your host, Rab himself. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting here with Fireball Jim, Jim Rhoda from Fireball Ministry and also executive producer of a bunch of awesome films. Uh-huh. Uh, Sound City, it's Sonic Highways, all yeah, that we, good stuff, and uh, we're just shooting the shit here. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like a yeah. Anytime you do something like this with that, you know, you know, with somebody, it's always like a different. You know, you bring up Sonic Highways, and I remember every time we'd interview somebody, you know, that was Dave Grohl's movie or in TV show, and Dave Grohl would always talk to. You know, he'd interview the artist because it was like, oh, you're artist to artist. And you get an interview with Dolly Parton, it, like Jim yeah. Rhoda's not going to do the interview because she's going to be like, uh-huh. But when Dave does it, it's like, oh, you're on my level. We're and peers. she opens up. Yeah. yeah. I for- totally forgot why I was telling you this. Uh, what were we talking about right before that? This is what happens. Assholes. Three strokes later. Three strokes later. You have to remember <laughs> what we were talking about. Oh, no. It was when Grohl would interview people that he knew. Yeah. It was always like terrible because they would like be, you know, chit chatting and like they would you know go off on these tangents where it'd be like, oh yeah, you know, it was like you know over at blah blah blah, and then this and that, and you're like, no, no one knows, I don't know, <laughs> no one was there, yeah. we weren't at the uh, the family barbecue yeah, or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember when you bought that house and you know you had that studio in the basement? No, <laughs> no one, no one remembers. Mm-hmm. That. But it was, yeah, that's how yes. it goes. <laughs> no, but that I think that's the fun of it. At I least this too. podcast is that it's just all about nothing and yeah. just wandering into many different directions. Yes. Um, so what's up, man? What are you? Uh, what are you uh, into right now? What are you working on right now? We, you know, I have a partner named John, and John and I did all Dave stuff together. Mm-hmm. You know, Dave's interesting because he he uh, doesn't ever stop working. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And yeah. like, you know, people will say things about him. But, you know, that he's one of those people that the person the you know, the persona that is, you know, perceived in the media is the act. That's actually that guy. Yeah. He's not any. There's no difference between, you know. He's the nicest guy in rock, you know, on stage and on TV. He's also that in life. Yeah. So he always has these ideas that appeal to me and my partner because he always wants to make the world better. Like, you know, with Sound City, he wanted people to see how special that place was not only to him, but just in like, you know, the the grand scheme of things. Like so much stuff came out of that place that made people happy. So people should know about it. Yeah. Same with Sonic Highways. It was like going to each city, like all those different cities and, and maybe turning a kid on to like, oh, that came from my town or, you know, this came from my town yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like that's, that's what's so awesome about that. So now we have, he wants to do all this new stuff that I really can't talk about with you. Right. I promise you'll know first. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And it's all the same. I'll know right when it comes out. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. no, but he always has ideas like that. We're, and so we're working on a few of those things. John and I are, are pitching a bunch of stuff now. Uh, do you know that chef Craig Thornton? Do you know that dude? He has this dinner in LA called Wolves Mouth. Oh, okay. And he does like uh he does like this eight to nine course meal. And you basically get invited to it. And, you know, you sign up for a on a on a 
waiting list and then you get invited like kind of randomly and then it can be like you'll go to dinner and it'll be it's only 30 people and it'll be like oh steve jones is here or oh like you know this person's here and yeah it's crazy because you'll be sitting next to like some dude that sells like you know zippers to some company. billions of dollars of yeah kiss. or like <laughs> even just like a normal person and then all oh. of a sudden it'll be like bam 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 like anybody yeah. who gets picked anyway that dude has an amazing story and he came up through like you know he came out he was like born in a trailer and like all this crazy shit in arizona he's a self-made chef self-taught guy totally came up with this whole like communal dinner concept and we're basically gonna do we're trying to do a sonic highways of food and he's kind of the guy oh so we get, yeah. yeah go all these places and see why these specific ingredients oh, or dishes dude, or that would, yeah, yeah. That would be yeah, really rad. I love eating and I love yes. traveling. <laughs> yeah. So let's, I'm fine. Let's just mesh the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, like, you know how it is, you know, in LA, man, you're always like developing something. Like, you always try to keep people, you know, you got 30 different things in, yeah. going on. And yes. from the outside, that just seems like bullshit. But to the people that actually can get things made, you know, it's like we all know that that takes time. Yeah. You know, like anybody that has does this crap in this town knows like, you know, it might seem like an amazing idea to you, but before it's going to seem like an amazing idea to him or her, yeah. like you got to kind of like develop it into something. Yeah. So yeah, we have all that. Going I remember on. that like being young when I first came out, not first came out, when I moved out. Uh, right after Viva La Bam, it was just like, oh, I've got all these things. And it was like, come on, what's taking so long? You know, and everybody, like, I'll get back to you two weeks later. You're like, what like yeah. like and at 25 years old you're like two weeks that yeah. seems like like a lifetime you know <laughs> i like, could be gone by then yeah yeah my whole there was so much has happened in that that period of time but um but yeah no i get how it takes time to kind of formulate and it nobody everything. nobody like i i find you know you know as i get older in this and and you know we all do this you know longer and longer it's like the people who tend to stay positive and like actually still want to do something for what I would consider to be the right reasons are the people that continue to work and they continue to stay you know, yeah. in it, in the game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, it's not easy. Definitely it's definitely a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. It's not easy. It's so how, like, so how did that, how did sound city come about in terms of like, I mean, I sort of know from watching it, I think that I think he got wind that like they were going to get rid of the place. Or whatever. Yeah. Well he, he, uh, like everybody, uh, you know, from Nirvana all the way down, you know that band Caius, right? Yeah. Like Caius recorded there too, and you know, like cause Scott's in the Scott, the bass player's in the movie who plays with us now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my point is, is like no matter how big or small of a band you were, like in the spectrum, everybody knew about that place. Yeah. Because like in the movie, how he said, like you know, it was always like a place you could afford to record, like even if you weren't a huge whatever. So when they were going to sell that console dave got called because dave dave and rick rubin both had told sandy skeeter whose dad was tom who owned the place like if anything ever happens and you sell you're going to sell that console call me so she called dave and she called rick rubin and the legend goes dave called her back first so then it was like, okay, I'll do it and we'll come pick it up like on, you know, Wednesday next week or something. Yeah. So sh they sold it to Dave and then he called me and he was like, hey, do you think you can get a camera or two out to Sound City? Because I bought the the console and I was like, what? And he's like, I'm like, why are they selling the console? And then yeah. he said, well, they released the space to someone else and he that dude doesn't want the console he wants to put his own console in there and i'm like nobody told that guy that console's been there for 42 years and yeah it hasn't moved it's the most since legendary the... thing ever yeah and the magic was those two things together that room and that console so you know we were just he was just like whatever he's like it's mine now so we went out and we filmed it and i remember we were standing there and tom skeeter the guy that owned the place older you know he's since passed but he was he was there with us that day he brought out this like print out like eight by 11 print out like spreadsheet printed out it was like that thick and he handed it to dave and he's like here's all the records that were recorded here on that console and we were standing there just going over like flipping through all the pages Damn. and we're like holy shit that holy shit that it was yeah. like that over and over and then i remember 
everybody like had a hand in moving that fucking thing out because it was like it was like (laughs) it was like sediment you know like a ship at the bottom of the ocean where (laughs) they were just like like all the grease and coke and fucking like weed resin and shit that was all in it It like so and we had to take it out and we had to push it through the window that was in front of the control room because it wouldn't fit out any door so they lifted up the windows anyway it goes through we get in the parking lot finally get on the truck I remember Dave was standing there and he turned around and he looked at me and he goes, we should interview everybody that recorded on this console. And I was like, that'll take a while. <laughs> what are you doing for the rest of your, whole, let's say, life? <laughs> and, and, you know, that, but then you like, you know, we known him a long time now. And that's like the thing. It's like you did that wheel, like those wheels start spinning and he just starts thinking. And, and I remember he was like, we should probably make a web series out of interviews that we do and i was like okay that 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 sounds rad like that'll be great he's like yeah i'll I'll call tom petty and i'll call this person and you know of course i'm sitting there going like holy shit that's awesome yeah and so then i'll just call every amazing artist that anyone wants to hear from sounds good to me (laughs) so cool i got a camera (laughs) yeah and then like it was probably like a week later he was like he said i want to make a movie and i was like no you don't and he was like, yeah, I want to make a movie. I want to make a movie about the studio. And I want, you know, and this and that. And I'm like, dude, you don't want to make a movie. Like, it's really hard. And it costs a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was like, no, I don't care. Like, you know, we should do this. But when he goes, you don't want to do it with me? I'm like, of course I want to do it with you. But I don't, I want you to know that it's not, it's kind of terrible. Yeah. The best part is that at the end, you get this awesome or not awesome thing. Yeah. I'm like, but if you know, if you try hard enough, I think you can make something awesome. And he's like, oh, so it's like making a record. I'm like, yeah, kind of only multiply every person by eight. Yeah, right, right, you know, it's right. Like, it's kind of <laughs> the same. So anyway, he was like super gung-ho about it. And then, you know, we just put it all together. And I mean, honestly, it was like between that and the TV show, I mean, like that was the greatest you know opportunity of my career i mean like we got to talk to you know a, a bunch of people that were amazing and, and you know like a handful of them who have are not here anymore so we have all these like extended incredible interviews with like tom petty and all these people yeah. and, and it's it was insane i mean i just you know i'm just always impressed with the way that dave you know cares so much about like archiving and you know having people you know giving people a legacy on top of their legacy because now like you can show that movie to any kid and your kid will ask a thousand questions about it and then that kid will be like oh i should go check that out you know like for when we were younger it's like you know there was no and then here we go right old people time but there was like no internet to like find shit out what the fuck's the internet (laughs) but you didn't know like you could you didn't hear about something then go look it up on your phone like you heard about something and then you went to the record store and you ordered it and you hoped it was good yeah like when it came like yeah. you'd be like well, how many albums you've bought that you're like uh one part of that was good and then the, the cover rest looked cool yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> like there's no i mean like you know i you might you probably remember about like listening stations at record stores yeah. where you could like put it on first yeah. and they like hmm. over at the wall yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, is this good next track mm, is this all right you know yeah. but like that was the thing that like you try... now on itunes they have a little sample yeah. of the thing like, yeah crap. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you don't even pay for it. Like that's yeah. the other thing. Like that's the crazy part. Like that we all lived through the mo- the time when like music became free. Yeah. And yeah it never yeah. went back. Yeah. Like, it, w- it wasn't like it was free for like a year. It's just it's still free. <laughs> yeah. Like even uh-huh. when you make a record now, you're thinking the whole time like, what's the point in this? And go back to the thing we were talking about <laughs> what's before. What's the point in this? <laughs> but I, I don't know if if, if if we were rolling, we were talking about like bands who go on tour now to play old songs. But that's kind of like the reason why they move into that because like they know, even as a big band, they could make the best record they ever made. And it's not going to have the same kind of impact because it's not a part of something anymore that anybody sees like any actual worth in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that yeah. make any sense? Yeah. I tend to not make sense. No, it, may, it makes per- perfect sense. It seems hard to even get excited about putting a record together. I mean, you think about television back in the day, it was like three, six, ten, right? Yeah. Fox wasn't even a thing until like we're, we're, I was like, you yeah, know, junior I don't, high, high. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So then 
three, six, ten, whatever you had was on that. Yeah. You know, and so then everyone's put their focus on that. So there, there's a much bigger audience mm -hmm. and it makes more of an impact because everybody's seeing it. Now everything's so spread. Specialized. You and, don't yeah. even know about certain things. You go, what? I, how did I not even know about that? There was, mm -hmm. there was, uh, where was the guy? I think his name is Chris Stone or something. He's like a, he's like a blues guitar dude. And I had it on in the car and, and Cossack was like, Oh yeah, yeah. I, like I heard about this a while back, and I'm like, oh, I just saw it because I read an article, but I wouldn't even have known. But he knew about it, but I, but I didn't know. But then, like you know, you feel like, how the heck, you know? I mean, it's yeah. There's still a level of having to go out and and search. Yeah. Um, but you have like these avenues, like you. Have, but like, there's so, so much yeah. it could like slip through the cracks, and you don't even. Yeah. You, how do, how are you ever going to tackle all of that? Back in the day, going to the record store, you knew like, all right, I'm at this record store. Then if this doesn't have what I'm looking for, I can go to the other one across town. Mm -hmm. But but it's not no. like there. There's just an endless amount of stuff, and you got to weed through a lot more shit now to get to the good yes. stuff. And we you know, we always talk about in our band like we you know it was supposed to be that the internet leveled the playing field for everybody you know like you it was exciting right right yeah it was exciting at the beginning because you were just like oh shit uh you know my band can have a website and it's on this it's in the same place as metallica's website like so we're the same now <laughs> yeah 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 like, yeah ah. yeah uh, okay <laughs> yeah, but, yeah you're <laughs> like but you know you know what it's funny it's it's not the same <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in the same place, yeah. but we're not the same it's thing. Weird, it didn't yeah. didn't get to that. Yeah, but did, that's did like, you uh, did you guys ever uh, tour with Metallica? Uh -uh. Or you uh, tour with? I mean, so Fireball Ministry, um, our band. Yeah, they uh, twenty one years young this year. Oh damn! I know, right? You can finally legally drink, huh? <sighs> dude. <laughs> for breaking out the champagne yeah, glass exactly yeah <laughs> um, it's like the insure but, you, but you've toured with, with yeah, we so toured many with, like yeah, Dio and, and Motorhead and, Motorhead and, yeah we got to do like I mean dude I say it all the time like I'm I am the luckiest as far as like being a person that gets to look back on when I was a kid and like think about shit that's happened to me and I'm sure you're the, you know you're equally feel equally as lucky because you get to meet these people that you like loved growing yeah. up that like in influenced you so much and then they turn out to just be fucking rad yeah which yeah. i'm i mean luckily for me that's happened more often than not yeah there's like barely anybody i ever met that i love growing up that i was like fuck that guy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like well i mean i think i think the field of of being a musician and, and also comedians too like it's sort of like the working man's version yes. of like Famous. what Hollywood yeah. would be because y you meet a musician and just the whole sense of it is like, there's no way you'll be good at doing this thing if you weren't down to earth. Yeah. And if you didn't have like your head out of the clouds, like if you, if you didn't have some sort of touch with yes. reality, how would you write songs? I agree like, that wow. relate. Yeah. yeah, you can't. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? It's like empathy, you know, like that's the, yeah. the songwriter's job. That's what, not to quote our own show, but that's what uh, uh, Steve Earle said on the TV show we did with Dave. He, he, he said that my favorite line of the whole show was like, he's like, that's your job as a songwriter. It's, you know, to sit there and write a song and then hopefully somebody will listen to that song and be like, yeah, that happened to me too and it sucked or that happened to me too and it was great. Yeah. And then, you know, like you have that connection and then, yeah, I agree. Like it's very rare that, that an actor gets that, you know, like, I mean, actors do it plenty of times, but it's not like the same thing. Musicians seem to mean more to people personally. And I know for me, that was the case. And meeting a guy like Dio or meeting a guy like Lemmy, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I was standing, you know, with Emily from my band and with Dave at Lemmy's grave site when they put his urn in the grave. And damn, I'm not, yeah, and I'm not telling you that to impress you. I'm telling you that because, you know, there's no fucking way I ever thought in my life that I would have yeah. any kind of relationship with that particular human being to be <laughs> at that moment in history. Yeah. Like I that's will tell crazy. it's not something I ever I mean, you know, I ever fucking thought would be even possible. And I even called, you know, I hope Nikki never hears this, but I even called my brother or texted my brother. Nikki had gotten a new Ferrari, Nikki Six, who, you know, I know and 
he had gotten a new Ferrari and I remember we were at his place and he's like, do you want to drive the car? And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. So I get in the, I, I get in the car to drive and he gets in the passenger side and we're driving around like, you know, like Calabasas or whatever the fuck neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I got out of the car and I texted my brother, you know, back in New Jersey and I'm like, I just drove Nikki Six's Ferrari and Nikki Six was in it with me. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. My brother was just like, yeah, fuck this. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, like, let me put down my accounting ledger and say, fuck, I <laughs> yeah. made the wrong decision by not yeah. picking up that guitar. Well, that's, and, yeah. but dude, that's the other thing we were talking about before. I mean, before we started this, I was so pumped to hear you say it. It's like, I really think that half the mentality now, and the reason why, you know, and again, you know, in the interest of not sounding like an old person, I think that shit's not awesome right now because like we were talking before you know you have to have a certain level of i don't fucking care about the rules like in yeah, your life yeah yeah yeah, yeah to yeah. do something awesome yeah like Hell you yeah. have to have that you have to have a fuck this fuck that yeah mentality like, i know you're telling yeah. me to do this yeah it's probably not what i'm gonna do yeah <laughs> like you have to have something that goes against the grain and, and a rebellious streak yeah and as that. cliche as it sounds like you know as dumb as that you know like is you know it's it's the truth you know like i am very thankful that there are people in the world that decide to be physicians yeah, yeah and yeah. you know policemen and things that like sure. i can't do because i'm not that mature yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah, I'm not that yeah. Like, I'm probably not that guy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm very thankful. Glad someone is. <laughs> yeah, I'm very yeah. thankful for those people, and you know, like yeah, you know, like I've. Well, yeah. that's what's funny, dude. My my oldest brother is an orthopedic surgeon, and I'm the dude who shits on things. Right. <laughs> you yeah. <know>? All good. <laughs> You need every yeah, it's yeah. like checks and balances place for everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's like a, that's a you know that's a real thing. Like you know, I think I think that I don't think enough. You know, like dude, I always get worried about what I'm going to say. I'm going to let you know that now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to There's think. There's an of, edit button on. Yeah, this I'm thing. trying to think of how to not to say something that would piss off a lot of people that I care about. But you know, it's like right now with movies and stuff. You know they're making the same goddamn movie over and over again and right. it's like it's either you know like a superhero movie that they just keep making the same thing over and over again with different costumes or it's the remake of something that you already saw like that should be a tip off to everybody that we're fucked to <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. that shouldn't be a good thing you're right, like, right and i understand it's entertainment to people and i understand that it makes people happy which is the point of all this shit but like we're what's the like what's the means to the end there like where do we end up well it almost seems like it's the easy route and 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 uh a rude route yeah, yeah. depending on where you're from england, england <laughs> but, or here yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> but uh but, but the, like the easy route is to say this has already been successful let's just kind of dust it off put some new people in and mm -hmm. do this and redo it. it's tried and true go for it to what but, end you know but, like but, but nothing good comes from taking the easy path i feel like you have to put yourself out there take that risk go for something that might not work and and i mean and you look at like jackass was that you know yeah, 100%. I mean, it, was, it was a thing that that people were worried about like uh, is this worth going to is this going to be worth anything and then when it came out it pissed off a lot of people senators were trying to get it canceled and there's all that now it's a which it's by a, the way usually it, means success yes. is right it's the next thing <laughs> yeah 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 right yeah, after, yeah. as soon as you start <laughs> pissing off senators <laughs> that's when you're doing the right thing yeah exactly i mean cuz you look at, the, at frank zappa sitting in front uh, of you know the it, best. in front of them and discussing all that and he handed everybody their ass yeah. and, it, and it was it's just i go back and watch that from time to time because it's just fun if to we say, had him now dude right because there's this mindset of like eh, just get over there and play your little guitar buddy and it's like this guy's brilliant yeah. on a whole nother level and he happens to be an artist and musician and all of that as he well he called it out like right. you call it out like but but that is, those are the types like him yeah. that are the renegades that that kind of move the needle forward and, and how do you do that if you go back to the old tried and true again and again yeah, and you're not thinking about like you know at, you know we are here to inspire the people the the next 
group of people that are going to create and change the world and and make you know we have this you know like you're going to be a new dad and 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 like as we get older i and i feel like we have this responsibility to raise people that aren't just told like you could do anything you want because that's like you know no you can't yeah it doesn't mean <laughs> shit and you know what you might be able to but that woman or that dude can't definitely can't yeah so it's like they can't do whatever they want they weren't born in you know like burbank you know yeah, like I yeah, know. yeah yeah exactly so it's like that's not fair to do to somebody but it is fair to inspire that person in my opinion to want to do that because then they could do it at their level. You yeah, know? yes, exactly. Do the best that you can with what you've got sort yeah. of thing. And um, I was thinking a little bit, though, about, like, the idea of musicians, artists, or, or you know, m- movie makers or whatever, doing stuff that is relevant with the time and, and that does move the needle and does change things. And I was thinking back to, because I, I had this thought of, like, all right, so Neil Young, Crosby, Steals, Nash Young, write like the uh, you know Four Dead in Ohio mm-hmm. song, and you're like, damn. Then, like, four people got shot on Kent State campus, and that was a huge deal, which created a song, which mm-hmm. which which helped with a movement yeah. and brought light to all these things. And there's like, and, and you don't like, and I was just thinking, and this is terrible to say it, but it's like 73 dead in Las Vegas. Like, you know, there's yeah. like, or however no many way. people yeah, are dead. It's just so disconnected. It's just the, yeah. happening so often and so much. And there's n- nobody really kind of saying anything or, or doing anything in that way. And it, it's just, it's kind of like, it's it's not for the lack of there being issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that those things aren't happening. It's become sort of a little scary in the fact that there's basically been a muzzle put on. Yeah, it's most callous. Yeah. Everybody's calloused over and like, you know, we, yeah, like 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 Jackass was was like, oh my god, they're doing this, and now it's like, oh, isn't that cute, old Johnny Knoxville and his thing? Yeah, and you his gotta buddy. like, you got every yeah. time you have to. <laughs> like, one, that's like, cute and just a household name and no big deal now. When it was an issue, then now yeah. twenty years later, it's like <laughs> that's nothing. Well, There's it was people. Like, do you remember when everybody was afraid of the devil? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. was a thing in the eighties. Like people were like afraid of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. especially was, in New Jersey. <laughs> that's right. See, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> believe me. No, and it was probably right. Uh, no, but I mean, that's like if you told a kid that now, they'd be like, huh? Like what? <laughs> like the devil? Get yeah, out. Like, come on, man. We <laughs> yeah. have like. You I'm know. afraid of the kid sitting in the back of the class. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> or like, so I hear I'm supposed to be afraid of people from other countries. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. like, oh god, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> the devil was so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He made it just most... a figment of imagination. Yeah, <laughs> so much better songs and movies came out of that than. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. They, I mean, but again, like in in the, you know during Reagan, like they had like you know like punk rock had this like total you know like rebirth because like the youth culture in in america was so fed up with you know that at the time that but they were inspired to pick up instruments and do the stuff you know like you know try to make a difference nobody's trying to make a difference now they're just every again like i'll say it again cameras were invented to point away from you, not at you. You know, I remember. <laughs> it's so right. My mom had this line, and and I remember my partner John that I produced with. We both, you know, we both grew up with you know Sicilian mothers in New Jersey, and so you can imagine that dynamic. Yes, like yeah, everything. You got that you, it. <laughs> anything that you were doing was ridiculous, and you know, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. they would they'll support it, but you're just a ridiculous person yeah <laughs> and i remember when i was like i don't even remember I, I don't know i was probably like 10 and i was all concerned about something going to school and being worried about this or that or the other thing and what somebody was going to think about something and i remember my mom said nobody gives a shit about you <laughs> except for you god it's so right nobody's <laughs> nobody's even paying attention to you just you <laughs> And that, like, I wish she was still alive so she could say that to the entire fucking youth culture of today. Yes. Like, just like, you know what? Like, unless, unless you know people want to look at you, 
they're not looking at you. <laughs> yeah. And my buddy John, his mom was the same thing. He had like a jacket or something that he was going to wear to school. And he's like, I don't want to wear that jacket or something. His mom said to him, same thing. Nobody, nobody's looking at you. Nobody. <laughs> I love that. Like, leave it up to mom to just squash your ego and right. make you feel, like, like, <laughs> take please. you right back to their normal size. <laughs> and what's so weird is that now, like, and you know, I, I'll be the first to admit I'm completely out of touch when it comes to anything that's going on, you know. Yeah, and, me too. But like, clearly, you know, thank you to the Kardashians for ushering in this like, you know, wave of it being okay to be famous for doing nothing and just existing. You know, like I don't even understand like what I don't know how you can monetize nothing. But they do. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> really brilliant. It was a good move. <laughs> yeah. I only wish I could fucking figure it out myself. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, even with Jackass and stuff, I mean, like, I remember when I saw all, you know, that for the first time, I remember thinking, especially with the CKY videos, like, wow, these guys were geniuses because they put a, they acted like assholes and filmed it. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If only I would have filmed myself <laughs> yeah, acting yeah. like an asshole yeah. you know, and doing shit that my mom told me not to do. Yeah. That's the move. Yeah. But yeah, again, like at least there was something to show for it. There was some sort of creativity happening. Yeah. It was during that know, point. Yeah. Again. There was a band out of it. There was, you yeah. know, little skits and funny and stupid shit and some sort of something. Yeah. There was so, like there was, but you, had you could also for credit that for the downfall of other things. Oh, as whatever. Well. I don't, yeah. and I'll tell you why. Because I, like, if I'm in a bad mood, I put on a jackass movie. I'm not in a bad mood anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still to this day, happened like a week and a half ago. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it, jackass three. I need yeah. to get. I need to get myself uh, <laughs> back up there. Laugh, yeah. yeah, just see stupidity and nonsense, and uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Dude, hit so, the nuts is so the uh, thing. speaking of CKY, the band CKY, you ended up yep. doing a band with Jess, the drummer of CKY. Yeah, it was cool. I the mean, company like, band. Yeah, even with Darren and Jess both, it was like uh, we, you know, they took us on tour. I think the first tour we did with them was in the UK, and I I remember uh, Jess and Darren both. You know, they had this like real like huge love of music. Yeah, you know, like, and it was great. Darren and I really we bonded over Kiss, which you know happens in my life a lot. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, you know, those are those are the four. That's my Beatles. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. That yeah. was to me. That was my, you know, that changed it all. Same as Darren, and then with Jess too. Like Jess, you know, really loves music. And then, you know, like when you're in a band, you're on tour, it's like being working on a movie. Like everybody on a movie is like best friends, you know, like yeah, you yeah. all become like family and then like it ends and you're like, all right, bye. So yeah. with a band, it's nice because you have, you know, it's not like you can, you know, you're not, you're not talking about people you're working on a movie with and be like, yeah, when this is over, we should just, you and me should just go shoot a movie together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, but right, with right. music, you can do that. You know, <laughs> you can be like, hey, let's do this thing. Yeah. And so, you know, Jess you know we had this you know i had this friend out here who had tried to start a band a bunch of times a guy named dave that that yeah. you know had never kind of like gotten to the point where he was ever happy with the bands he had started and then he had a bunch of song ideas and i was like well you know my friend jess who plays in cky really wants to do something together and then you know dave i was like well you know like let's figure this out like if you could have any singer in the, like pretend you can have any singer in the world who would it be and he was like neil fallon and i remember thinking like well we could make i can i can make that phone call yeah so we called jess and i both called neil and we were just like hey we got these songs and you know we're trying to put this thing together and that's how that whole thing happened like it was just like you know, Jess and I having a conversation in catering one night and being like, hey, we should do this together. And then we did that. And that, that was a lot of fun, you know. Dude, but it was funny because Neil Fallon for me. So Jess turned me on the clutch when I was probably like 12 or 13. And, uh, and so I fucking love them. And they were like, I just listened to them so much that they were like, I was like obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And then when jackass happened you start meeting all these yeah. famous people and like you know there's just tons of big big name a-list people and they would be like oh yeah cool nice to meet you like that's the way i felt i was like oh, i don't care and, right. and i sort of was arrogantly like fuck you you think yeah. you're somebody so i sort of had that <laughs> i'm young yeah 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 i'm young i don't give a fuck about who any of you think you are so then but when i met neil i was like hey yeah. man 
hey. He's like, <laughs> and I, was, I was like, what happened to me? I just got weird. And, and like, I kind of like coward and like yeah. sort of was like just kind of taken by him because he, he's a powerful. He's a force, like, man. Like, yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's another dude, right? Like, that's a guy that, you know, in, in a few years, people will understand how amazing that band is. Oh, yeah, I, think. Yeah. I mean, not that they don't now, but yeah. I really feel like Clutch in 2019 is still very popular. Yeah. And they are the essence of what a, like a rock band is. And they're not like from five years ago. They're from, from like 30, 30. years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So to be able to be relevant and that old and still have that much to say. I mean, talk about a band who actually is still putting out great music. Yep. Like in a weird, like they're one of those weird ones where, you know, to me that was Motorhead too. Like I would get a mo the new Motorhead record every time it came out and I'd be pumped. I'd be like, this is great. This is, you know, this is, I will listen to this as much as I listen to the old, thing, old Motorhead. Yeah. And I feel the same way with Clutch. I just, you know, again, if you, think about legacy when you're doing this stuff you know like all the whatever it is like any any of this art you know in a career in the arts i sound like a fucking like guidance counselor <laughs> but uh you know it's like yeah. if you, if you, <laughs> fireball gym go down and see fireball gym yeah, the listen, guidance counselor don't go to class it's useless <laughs> it's a waste of time go to your practice space <laughs> and just play your drums go jump off shit with your friends yeah, yeah. you'll get much more out of life um <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, honestly, like you think about a legacy, you know, like you have to leave something behind when it comes to doing this stuff. And I think that, you know, because Clutch works so hard and they tour so much and they make they con consistently make records, it's like, you know, their legacy, they'll be known for being that band. And that's yeah. very admirable to me. It's like, you know, all those guys, man. I mean, they got multiple kids. They got families that yeah. they're supporting and they fucking, they're, I don't know when they're not on the road. I know. I feel like I, I've, I've just bumped into them being on the road yeah. from time to, you're like, oh, I'm the just showing station. up to some, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, it's like just passing through, yeah. you know, they really do just constantly yeah. work work at it and uh but 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 so i i mean i love the company band and yeah i and wish we would do, did yeah i'd love to do it like we you know so what happened you you, you basically just everyone got busy and, kind and of it, it, you know yeah. <sighs> neil neil put it best you know it was like a thing that we were all doing to have fun right. and then it kind of started turning into a band <laughs> yeah, 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 and like yeah. that's hard. Yeah. Like that's when it gets hard. Cause then, well, the funny thing was that I went to like it, we were in Jess's basement. And you guys were practicing, getting ready. Maybe yeah. you were gonna do a, a one off or something. And I remember being in the basement there, going, "This is so weird. They're like enjoying this. Yeah, you know, like they're having a good time with this. <laughs> I really don't see that that much with the band. Yeah, and and they're actually like really just getting along. And it was like man th this is like how it should be and you realize yeah because it's a side project and yeah, it's, it's and like it's a, a good fun time. thing yeah and that's funny that you noticed that i remember that i remember that that was at jess's old place yeah i remember that night never mind we don't have to talk about that part but uh yeah i remember that night was foggy yeah yeah <laughs> that's like we said that, that's yeah, safe yeah, yeah, yeah. so anyway um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, uh, a lot of foggy uh, nights <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah you know again you know like, at first when i think when you get into a band at least in my experience you know you're kind of all in it for the same reason and you're all trying to like accomplish the same thing whether you know whatever that is and then you know eventually like one person or two people it's kind of like survivor you know like people start to like <laughs> get voted off the island yeah <laughs> and, and you get like you pack up you know you make a lot one of the alliances with each other like certain oh, people yeah, make yeah. alliances and then and then it's like you start to like think that things are supposed to be going one way or another way and then like you know there's other people in the you know group that are like yeah i don't know i think maybe we should just stick to the thing that we started to do and <laughs> the voice of reason that comes in yeah but then that yeah, yeah. sometimes that becomes unpopular yeah you know it's like so i mean i don't so it turned into a band <laughs> turned into a band and that was neil's quote like neil i remember when there was like you know I mean, that band had very minimal drama, even for a band. But I remember Neil saying that, like, when some of the the, you know, the bits of drama were starting to bubble up, Neil would be like, "Ah, oh, it's turning into a band." And I was like, "Yeah," but I mean, I would never rule out like doing other more shit. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, 
you know, uh, we did. We've talked about it recently, but Neil again is the one that's real busy. So we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah. So you did you did an EP and an LP. We did and... two EPs and an LP. Okay. And yeah. then we did like a total of six shows ever. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in in history. Yeah, and, yeah, I, that, and I think that that poster is the I've first show. I've at least been ever. To, I think two of them or something. Yeah, and, you came yeah. to the Note one. Yeah. Did you come to Harrisburg? And I think was it Harrisburg or I don't know where it was. Pittsburgh maybe? Yeah, maybe it was Maryland. Pitt- no, uh, yeah, I think it was Maryland. Um, the U no, U-Haul in DC we did, I remember. Okay, yeah. That's I think like, I was at the Note and in Maryland. Um, cause, cause isn't clutch from Maryland? Yeah, they're from around like Silver Springs. And yeah, stuff. yeah. 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 Jess Margera. Perhaps, you know him. Hmm. I've met him. I remember <laughs> the night of that, you the university hall show in DC, Jess drank everything. <laughs> he drank all the things. Oh uh, yeah. And it was, Oh, I've really. never seen him like messy. But that yeah, one night, that's a rare thing. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that night it was like it was <laughs> like <laughs> it was like just the drinks were all getting mixed together. So like the, the left timing was like, right on. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> I've never seen that before, and I remember. Oh uh, man! Yeah, you can ask him. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> that was. That was. You know, Dude, again. one time. So one time uh, in Florida, there's always a, there's this story, and I think we might Jess and I might have talked about it on the podcast, but. They CKY was putting an album out, and uh, I would go on tour with them, and I'd run out and and yell to the crowd, get them mm-hmm. to do the CKY chant, and then you'd jump off like a speaker into yeah, the crowd or some whatever, yeah. and it would get things going. and And I ran out that day, and they had all these bottles of champagne lined up on the stage, and they were like celebrating that the album just came out. So. I run out and I <laughs> yell and see KYZKY and then, then I look over and see these bottles of champagne that unbeknownst to me, the guy who gave them to Jess and them to put out, they were like, look, this is just for ambiance. Whatever you do, do not drink this. This is disgusting, like sedimented, like oh, champagne yeah. that should not be drank and it's been sitting there forever. It's just for the look. I did not hear that part of the equation, so I ran out <laughs> and, and grabbed this it. This story sucks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I grabbed it, sprayed one oh. into the crowd, grabbed the other one, and then started to drink it. And just did hear that part of the equation, but proceeded to make a drum beat so that so, everyone yeah. was like, drink, drink. And, and, then, and it was like this drum beat to it, and I drank the entire bottle. Of and then you're champagne. chewing. Like. Yeah, and you continue. It's like the chunks in the bottom. <laughs> and uh, and it, almost immediately, I mean, it might have been like three and a half minutes later, I was completely vomiting all over, like everything. As I projectile vomiting, as I'm running out the door to try to get to the alleyway to puke on everything. Right. And then some kid that was like outside of the show was like rap i'm like Ugh. it was like you know <laughs> just like throwing up on myself and uh yeah that was uh that, thanks, that was jess. a messy uh, yeah thanks Justin. <laughs> well he, he, he got you he got your retribution was that yes, u-haul show i'm because, glad to hear it <laughs> dude and you I, yeah i don't i don't know <laughs> jess is like that weird he's that weird guy that'll like he'll he'll find like a sorority girl drink and like get super into it <laughs> yeah, like a nice cosmopolitan yeah or like a washington <laughs> apple shot like you always want to do this yeah 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 and you'd be like oh, dude i don't know like i just i don't know and then by the n- end of the night you've done like six yeah with him yeah yep. and you're just oh, like definitely. I'm this. It, it was always yingling lager he'd have those and then yeah and then it washington would be like apple. washington apple <laughs> yeah. I you know pat pat from the foo fighters he was the only other person Pat's not a big drinker, and I remember the, he's the only other person that ever like ordered a Washington apple in my presence, <laughs> besides Jess Margera. And but Pat got a Washington apple in a pint glass. Oh, oh! And he drank it. Oh. 
And I just was like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> this, you're... Is, this is changing things, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have a hole in your stomach. Yeah, our relationship has changed. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> I was impressed and mortified like, at yeah, the same time. Yeah, it is eating away at the lining of your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> that pucker. You ever had one of those? It's fucking... It's like that green sour apple pucker shit. Yeah. And then like... Yeah, and like whiskey and like something else. That's it was just... like It was like the poor man's fireball before fireball yes. came out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, Which, like all sorority girls were drinking that and then they just shifted to the fireball shot. Disgusting. <laughs> and yeah, I don't that, know what's happening now. I'm kind of out of the loop. But. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like when we play shows now, it's like we get we'll get to the show and then you know, we just did this whole uh, we did a, a UK run with Orange Goblet in October last year and I remember like I was asking the tour manager like book a hotel that I can walk to every night. Yeah. Like every night. Yeah. So I can be in bed. <laughs> At 11 p.m. <laughs> right after. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. I'm going to go out to the merch part, sign a few things, shake people's hands and say thank you. Then I'm going to sleep. Yeah. And every <laughs> night, every night I'd be sending pictures back here of me in the bed, to, you know, to to my crew. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. And I'd just be like, because, you know, I had some health shit happen. She doesn't need to think that I'm out there. Yeah. Making more of that happen. Yeah, so you, the hell things. So you had yes. st- a stroke. Exciting. A no, three. Yeah, three at once. Jesus. I, I had, uh, I had, Wait, uh, when was this? 2016. Okay. I used to weigh about 100 pounds more. Yeah, because I saw, like, I think I saw a photo of you from, or somebody, and it, it was like, oh, whoa, you, like, shaved the beard, and yeah, then you, it looked and then different. You, yeah, and then I was like, oh, but I didn't know that you had it gone through that. It was because of that. Yeah, okay. So, Went back and forth to the doctor a bunch of times. The doctor's like, you have asthma. I'm like, that's weird. I've never had asthma. <laughs> and I'm 42 or Drinking-induced asthma. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's kind of weird. So back and forth a bunch of times to the hospital or whatever. And then, uh, like, the last time I go, I go to the emergency room, it was like, it was like uh, 2016, like around uh, Valentine's Day. So, so you kind of saw this coming, and then nobody really so, knew yeah, what was like, going on? Yeah, like they, you know, because again... My dad was a doctor too, like your brother. And, you know, like nowadays, it's almost like they can't tell you what they think. Oh, no, I know. Because of malpractice. Yeah. Like lawsuits and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, they just kind of like get, like, it's more guessing, like, than before. Before, like, somebody's just going to come definitively in there and be like, you have this yeah or this is this like they don't do that they can't they go, do that yeah then. you can't say it because then if it you, isn't right yeah and then it's like well you were treating me for this and it's like oh yeah well i mean and, and again like i am just this is pure conjecture this is not based on any fact but like asthma is like a thing that you could tell somebody that they have and it's not that bad <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, so anyway the last ekg i had I, I remember i was sitting at the urgent care and the dude was like what medications are you on? I'm like, well, I'm on these steroids for asthma. And he looked at me and he goes, you don't have asthma. And I was like, oh. <laughs> cool. Uh, he's like, I just did an EKG on you. And he goes, and I don't want to freak you out. But he's like, you have to go to the emergency room. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he got <laughs> the me. The quicker you can get there. Right. And so, like, the urgent care was down the street. They take me to the emergency room and I get there. And they're like, we need to do a bunch of tests. I'm like, cool, fine. Do a bunch of tests. I'm in there. And they're like, you have you know congestive heart failure and i was Jesus. like yeah that's that was my reaction and i'm like well what's that <laughs> You're like, sounds a lot like yeah. death is around the right. <laughs> so i'm dying and the they're fact like well, that we're talking to you is really blowing us away at this moment <laughs> it was almost that so i guess you know like and again i apologize to any cardiologist who hears this podcast but uh yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna do the best don't worry, if we got my wife in here right now, she'd spot off every she fact. She would know exactly, yeah. Yeah. That's the good thing about wives. <laughs> uh-huh. They want you here. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to pretty much do anything. I mean, unless, you know, you hit them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or so Don't I do hear. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, please, everybody, that's not real. Um, but yeah, I, uh, you know, they told me there's a number called your ejection fraction. And normal persons is like, I think, it's like the amount of blood your heart pumps out because there's a different yeah. number of the heart, the blood that goes in. So the number that goes out is your ejection fraction. And again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering this, but I know that it's like 
40 or 50, maybe 50 or 55% to 75% is normal. And mine was below 20. So my heart was barely pumping any blood out. Like, barely. And it was all damaged from, you know, excessive drinking and not being healthy and whatever. So... So, fuck, what happens if it's not pumping enough out? It's over. It just... Stops. Uh, that's, it's over. That's that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Game of... The pug gets pulled, and that's Jesus. the end. Jesus. So... And this was only three years ago? Three, you're 45 at the time? Or, or yeah, what how was I? Yeah, 43. Yeah, I was like 43 or 44. It's 2016. So six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, three, no. Cool, so in a couple years. Yeah, a couple <laughs> you know, years. I, I, I always do this. I just turn it on to me like... Oh, what's wrong with me? I get on the way home. I'm going to be like, oh, are you sure? Everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think because it feels yeah. like a thousand years ago. And yeah. then I know it was like yesterday. Yeah. yeah so yeah. anyway, long story short, I get, I'm in the hospital week. They're like, you got to change everything. You know, like they give you the whole thing. They're like, okay, all that shit we've been telling you to do like gradually over the last 10 years. Now you have to do it today. <laughs> like today's the day you do all this yeah. shit. So they put you on a million medications and they give you the shit. And luckily, you know, luckily and not luckily, like heart failure is like so common now that they have all these really good medications for it kids but the thing about medication is that it only works if you do the work like you're yeah. n- it, there's no like pill that cures diabetes right like, yeah there's a pill that helps you live longer now that you're getting your diabetes under control right like that's right, how right, medication right. works yeah. yes like that's how like, it theoretically should be working yeah. but a lot of people rely solely on the yeah pill. or they try they think like yeah. oh well i'm taking my pill now i'm fine you're like no no no, no. you did the damage dude yeah you, you gotta you undo that part fucked it all up yeah <laughs> so so let me ask you this about the heart failure so did you didn't like you, you knew like oh i couldn't breathe a little bit whatever no you said like this you went, couldn't breathe it was at all i'm telling you it was okay so you knew so yeah so but but you said you went on a couple weeks or something right like you let it go and then you went to the emergency well no i was getting diagnosed by doctors like that i had asthma right so then they would give me what would happen so you were basically what i'm asking is you were in heart failure yes for that period of time while you thought you had an asthma correct Oh my and they God. were giving me steroids because they would give me steroids because they were like, well, you have asthma. I take the steroid pack and you'll be blah, blah, whatever. And I would take the steroids and I would f- be able to breathe better. I'd be yeah. like, oh, this is working. <laughs> the magic of medicine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then that would wear off. And I'd be like, I can't. F- I did this. That <laughs> happened two times. And I was like, I can't fucking breathe. And then finally oh, this man. dude. So I go to the hospital. I'm in the hospital for like two weeks. They get me like, you know, together, whatever. And then I get discharged and then one day i'm in a meeting and i'm like the thing about having strokes (laughs) is is that no plus side of having (laughs) three strokes at once it's that you you know something is terribly wrong but it doesn't hurt it's not like apparently when you have a heart attack there's like all this massive chest pain and you're like oh this is terrible and i'm dying and i could die yeah but when you have strokes, you just, you don't feel bad. You're just trying to talk, and your words are all out of order. Oh, man. It's like shit like that. And then you're like, oh. And then, like, I remember I walked out of the room I was in, and I was with a bunch of people I work with. And I remember, like, my my right side felt like it was in slow motion, but my left side was normal speed. <laughs> it was on a sprint. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was the weirdest feeling. Oh, man. So I was able to get out of my mouth, like, I need to go to the emergency room. And I said, I remember I said to this guy I, work, I worked with at the time, I was like, something is wrong, and we need to go to the emergency room. And he Holy was like, shit. okay. And, like, another person I worked with, they all, like, hopped to, and it was like, bam, straight to the emergency room. I get there. I'm lying in the, on the gurney. Finally, my you know my chick gets there because obviously they're calling my chick like, hey, you got to come to emergency room. Something's fucking wrong. So, and I already had this heart failure. You know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they had already diagnosed me with heart failure, so my chick was already on high alert. So, get to the emergency room, laying down on the on the gurney thing, and I remember they were like, we need to do a CT scan. So they bring me in, they scan my head, and they you know scan my heart or whatever. And I remember we're coming back into. <laughs> into the uh the the like i don't know what they call it like the the like area that you're in an emergency room yeah whatever that's called triage yeah yeah so i'm getting pushed 
back in there and then all of a sudden like the doctor who every doctor now when you get to be our age looks like they're 16 so the 16 year old doctor that's pushing me back into <laughs> Doogie the Doogie Howser's yeah. back there just but pushing they all look like yeah. that now no matter if they're neuro doctors or like yeah. cardiologists yeah. they all look like they're 10 yeah yeah so this guy I was like kid this guy's pushing me back into the triage area and I just saw his face like oh shit like his face oh shitted and I was like that's not good and he's like we need to get you back into the scan right now and I'm like okay and then I remember hearing on the the intercom like code stroke you know code stroke and I'm like fuck is that me <laughs> oh man so I go into the I'm halfway hearing that on my left side but I don't hear that so I go 100% so then I go into the CT scan again they give me one and the dude starts pushing me back out to triage and he's like listen you're having a stroke and I remember at that moment feet like I, I was grabbing the rail to the bed and it felt hot oh, and shit. I was like that's weird so and I remember he he's pushing me back in and I remember I couldn't really like you know because i'd already had a stroke when i first did it and then these were like subsequent ones like aftershock strokes yeah sort of like the earthquakes we had a few yeah yeah (laughs) so he's like he's like i want to give you this i I, we want to give you this shot in your iv it's called something tsp or tps or some shit and he goes it'll stop every blood clot in your body in an instant and he goes there's a 70 percent chance of success and a 30 percent chance that you'll bleed out and die some people have that reaction i know so then i'm just <laughs> so i'm like well those are pretty good odds like i'm thinking to myself yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty good so then my wife's there and and she hears that and she's like give it to him because like my face was starting to get weird and i was starting to get weird and so she's like just give it to him so i remember this fucking dude he puts my head in like a fucking thing like a like a headgear thing for braces <laughs> to keep my fucking head we're still. just gonna put some braces on you yeah, it was like, like what crazy. yeah you got What's this one on? snaggle tooth uh, right. yeah. hey we figure we'll fix everything so uh, do you want your boobs done uh, yeah. so i'm sitting in there and then they give you the shot and then they're like you can't move your head don't move your neck but like everything stopped like all any weird feeling i had just it was like poof it was gone and then they were like yeah there's no you don't have a blood clot anymore you're fine and you know didn't dunn have a clot too yeah. at one point above his heart yeah, yeah yeah it was that but his didn't go in right that was the thing or his did go i don't or i don't think it didn't it. he had every day he had to go get the uh like the transfusion or whatever yeah the, but, whatever yeah, yeah i can't remember any of the shit either yeah. but that was like it was a similar thing and then because they Again, not to be a, not to turn your podcast into a PSA, but the minute you think you might be having a stroke, just get your fucking ass to the emergency room. Because the reason yeah. why I can still play the guitar and I can still walk and I talk okay is because I went right there. All the people I know who have not been so lucky, like they wait because it doesn't hurt. Like I said, like it does not hurt. You just feel weird. Okay. And most people are just what like, is the weird feeling of it? Like, like you, you're, you're like, saying the one side sort of like imagine. Okay, hold on. Because I'm a hypochondriac, so I want to turn this on to what I'm gonna, I can I'll freak help, out about. I will help you. <laughs> Imagine, like, when... You know when you get so drunk and you might have taken a pill or two... Or somebody might have slipped one in your drink. Yes, something that, like that would that. happen. Or five pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you hit that point where you're like... You're just... Like able to fucking have that last moment where you're like, I shouldn't do anything more. <laughs> like imagine being stuck right in that limbo. Like how that would feel. That's how it feels. Okay. Like where you're still able to have conscious thought and like maybe make the right decision right before you make the, the worst decision. Mm-hmm. It's like that. So if you've ever felt like that, but like you haven't been drinking at all or taking any drugs, that's how you'll know you're having a stroke. Okay. So that's hopefully that helps people. Yeah. <laughs> Not that that made any sense whatsoever, but <laughs> it's like you get to a certain point where you're like, I know something's very wrong and I can't control it. And it's like that. Yeah. But just get your ass to the hospital because the, the like I said, the friends I've known that have had a bad time. The other thing is that weird cold hot thing. Like if you pick up something that you know is hot and it's cold something's wrong 
Yeah. And then the people who wait and they take a nap because they're like, well, fuck it. I don't, I'm not, nap. I don't hurt. <laughs> a lot of people do that. I know. I'm, I'm such a freak, though, that like I would never be able to. But I had this thing happen in recently where I was like getting this vertigo. Mm hmm. And it's like the weirdest feeling because you're like, oh, like my head's yeah. gonna fall off my neck, and uh, and I could, and I, I that was like, but I I get why you would do it because I bitch and moan about everything else, yeah, and then that was going on, yeah, and I was like quiet about it, yeah, and my wife's like, what? How long has that been happening? I was like, oh, like three weeks. Yeah, she's, she's like, like what the hell? I'm like, she's like, you bitch about everything else. Like, you know, I, I always say if I stub my toe, the whole neighborhood knows. <laughs> and like, you know, and then and then I have that going and I'm just like, oh, I was just thinking well, it was going to go you, away. Did they tell you what, what it was? So, no, then because I went to the doctor and I thought because I was out surfing that maybe there was water in my inner ear and that was causing the vertigo thing. And then I went to the doctor. They said it wasn't and that it might have been this BPPV thing so mm. then I had to do this Epley maneuver thing and once I tr I was trying to do this Epley maneuver you like lean your head off the side of the bed to get rid of this vertigo and that wasn't really doing anything and I was freaking out so I was looking up some other things so oh then, good then that's I, where yeah. it gets good the looking up yeah yeah that's that the really minute it goes good. great yeah because then you know it just says oh it's not a big deal right. no it actually that says you have AIDS. you're you're yeah. dead I can't believe you can actually read this paragraph <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's like those guys, those people that ate the weed and then they called up and I went like uh I think we're dead we're dead <laughs> it's like, I've been that, there. that's what, that's what it feels there. like I've been at that yeah so it's not good to look up anything at all don't ever look it up because if you farted wrong somehow the yes. uh, webmd will tell you that you yes. have died of AIDS cancer, cancer twice yeah. <laughs> yes. and so i just looked up uh <laughs> like things for vertigo yeah and it su like suggested maybe like acupuncture so i went and started doing acupuncture i did it like for like four weeks ago and i've been doing it you like twice better? a week and i went away instantly yeah it was crazy like like and the dude that like the acupuncture guy he's this like old um he's korean he's like this old korean dude can't even speak english he had a translator there no need and he just goes huh and i like i gave him my arm he put four fingers on my arm and he goes huh and then he said it to them and he, it's basically he's like oh you have overactive mind which is causing this stuff which can cause anxiety yeah, which yeah. then will cause some parts of depression and uh so then you might end up with like some sort of vertigo or something and then i was like look at him he goes so why are you here and i was like you nailed it that <laughs> like, and he, like he, all he did is put four fingers on the one That's side of my crazy. arm and he go knew the whole entire thing i was i was blown the fuck away i was like kind of freaked out like what I was like, what else do you know about me? <laughs> my dad, man, my dad, yeah. who was a doctor, he would always get, you know, people would ask him all the time. I'm sure they ask your brother too, like, oh, do you believe in that stuff? Or, you know, do you think that's something? My yeah, dad was like, medicine, if it yeah. makes you feel better, it's the right thing. Yes. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing. And th those guys, I believe, like, people like that, they have that, like, they're He's in tune with yeah. what was going on. And, and I instantly have felt better from the first time I got the acupuncture. And now I just am doing it to kind of get everything in order. That's but awesome. it's been, but it's been really good. But I've been so, to, I've so been when you too. went through that though, let's, I still want to hear more about yeah, yeah. like, like what was the recovery and how like so they caught it early and then then yeah. you got that then you, you said it was a shot or was it a pill well no that goes in you like right then okay and then that's when the cocktails start you know like that that's when they you know there's like a, a drug for everything now so but like this one works with that one that one works with this one this one works with that one and they yeah. did they got all that together but the problem is that when you have strokes you know you have brain damage like technically yeah so then i i had a few seizures from that which I don't know if you've ever had a seizure. I did. Yeah. When I uh, withdrew, withdraw from alcohol. Right. But were you yeah. conscious and sober at the time? Yes. I was basically kicking all the stuff out of my system. Right. Yeah. So, but you remember having the seizure. Yeah. That's the craziest shit. Yeah. Did you go out? Like, were you... I fell and then was on the ground. And then I was... I, like, was aware of... I was slightly aware of it like just doing this weird shake and the girl that i was dating at the time was freaking out and didn't know what the hell was happening yeah yeah but the both i had two when i was awake and one when i was asleep and the the two when i was awake one was at a restaurant and then one was at my office 
and I know this is like the worst, like most boring podcast. All and he's like, kill me. Um, but I, <laughs> hey Rick, you know we're trying to save lives here. <laughs> yeah, but those are weird. Seizures are weird too because I, like both times I had the seizures when I was awake, my head turned to the left, and then I was just out, and then oh, I don't remember shit. anything. The first time I woke up in the emergency room. And my chick was there, and I was like, "What's fucking happening?" It was weird. <laughs> Jesus, it's like worse than a, than a blackout when you wake she's up. Like, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. And she's like, "You don't remember the ambulance ride?" I'm like, "What?" And she's like, <laughs> "That's yeah, gonna you... cost me." <laughs> yeah. And I was, she goes, yeah. "Yeah, you." She's like, "You just hit the. You were sitting on the chair talking to you know our friend Tony, and she's like, and Tony said you looked to your left, and then you fell off your chair." Damn. And I was like, that's weird. And the same thing happened in my office. But like the one that happened in my office, I, I could, since I had the other one, I knew it was kind of coming. And then I remember I was just like, you know, I woke up and like all the people at work were just like around me. And I was just like, Ugh. movie people trying to be. You know. <laughs> I had one person I was working with at the time that's still a very close friend who I loved to death. And she was just like, why did you do this to me? Why? You know, I was like, I know. I'm, and you just feel guilty. You know, you know. Why'd you do this to me? <laughs> But you feel <laughs> guilty, like, you know, you're just like, oh. Sorry if I stroke yeah. out in the way yeah, of yeah, uh, yeah, I like, finishing look, out. The- I had a lot of fun, and this is all my fault. Yeah, I yeah, understand. Yeah. I blame nobody but me. Yeah, but a like fun you're, stroke. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're, in, when you're in trouble, you know, like when you get to these points, too, you, you know, you're going to know now you have a kid. You know, you just get that weird feeling where you're like, ah, she didn't do anything to deserve, you know. You know, my, ba- my behavior shouldn't be her problem. Yeah. So you get your shit together and then it's fine. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Stick around a little longer. So after the fact, like once you got, like you, there wasn't, was there a lot of recovery from? No, I mean, for me, I, I lost a bunch of weight. You know, luckily I have a really close friend who's a, a cardiac NP, you know, nurse practitioner who I love to death. Her name's D, And she, you know, she was like the person that medically just kind of helped me like understand what I had done to fuck me up. And what, you know, like what, what I could do to get better. And then, you know, my wife, you know, is like, a, as I was telling you, she teaches Pilates and spin and, and, you know, for every shitty habit that I, you know, like I'm Italian and both my parents were Italians and Italians equate food with Everything. emotional yeah, attachment yeah, yeah, right yeah. so all your emotions are attached to eating which is makes perfect fucking sense right? yeah <laughs> so you learn all these terrible habits and then they come you know they stay as you know yeah, they, yeah, everything yeah. it's yeah. there for life <laughs> my wife is the opposite Trying to undo that right. forever exactly. <laughs> thanks folks uh but you know my wife is the opposite like no no one in her family has emotional attachment to food so she's got this really good healthy kind of version of life that now yeah. i've had to adopt yes you know, or you know ex- rescue accept. yeah exactly <laughs> so after all that you know you start eating better and then you know I, you know I, i'm going on record as saying this i will never admit it if anyone's in front of me but you, know, you realize like yeah i do feel better yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like when you stop drinking so much, you're like, yeah. "Wow, yeah, I never hung over." Yeah, it's nice. That, yeah, that feels <laughs> it's nice. Fine. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, I don't know. I don't know if you've experienced this because I don't want to. I'm not sober, and it's. Not, I'm not saying that like as you know, like, oh, I'm not sober. Uh, I'm not sober, <laughs> and I'm, but you know, I'm lucky <laughs> yeah. that I don't have to be so. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Ha- I didn't have to go to that level. I've had to make as extreme changes in other ways in my life, so yeah. I can relate to it. You know, and, and a lot of, you know, uh, obviously a lot of people that we know in our lives because of what we do, you know, we know a lot of sober people now. Yeah. We also know a lot of dead people, yes. which sucks. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's like, but, uh, you know, I tell people this all the time. Like, would you ever, would you do anything different? You Me? Know? Yeah. No. Yeah. That's what's so fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's how I, the perspective I look at it. Like, you know what? It's rare in your life that you get to be around and know people that feel the way that we just said. So why not try to stick around? Because right, we yeah. got to experience that. Yeah. And with my brother, we call it hitting the finish line. You know, like I, I hit the finish line. Like it's fine. Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I crossed it. I'm mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Like I got to do a lot of shit at, on my own terms. Like yeah, yeah. more so than a lot of people that I know. Yeah, yeah. And most, and I, I'll tell you the, the the people I respect the most in my life are the people that got to do it on their own terms, right? Like, those are the people that you always look up to, like, oh, you didn't have to take shit from anybody. 
and you actually did. Yeah. But you pushed through it. That's why I love Howard Stern so much because like he's the ultimate version. Oh, Everybody yeah, yeah. told that guy like you're a <laughs> yeah. piece of shit and yeah, you'll yeah, never yeah, make yeah, any. Yeah. This will never happen. And yeah. he, you know that guy's like the living example of being a middle finger to like the earth. Right. And, so. and what's so rad about him? And you'll say, and I'll say this to people because they'll they'll be like, oh, I don't know yeah. about him. And then even still, and you go, oh, cool. Did, did you know that he has like three daughters that are really well adjusted and yeah. they do a lot of incredible things for the world and they're like philanthropic and, yeah. and they're like, what? And yeah. I'm like. Yeah, so the guy that you think is so awful raised these yeah. incredible women. How could that possibly yeah, three be? Three very strong yeah. women that yeah. are very conscious of other people. Right. So how is, could that be if he was truly this awful yeah. monger? It just he found what worked and mm-hmm. and and went in and leaned into it. You yeah. know, and that And he knew yeah. that being honest with people about shit is always the best. Always you'll like you will you will connect with people better when you tell them like you know, when you're honest with them. Yeah. And you say, like, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. I will be transparent with you so that you don't find something out later. You yeah, know, yeah. and it's like, as long, you know, like, I, I talk mad shit. Like, I, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to lie to anybody. Yeah, yeah. But I'll also talk mad shit right to the person. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I'm talking mad shit on. I don't ever care if anything's being recorded. Because if I say something that bums you out or pisses you off, like, I'm a phone call away. I'm the easiest person to reach. Yeah, All yeah. of us have 700,000 social media accounts. Yeah. So if I did yeah. something to bother you, please tell me. Send me a message. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, we can talk about it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, like, that's, you know, if you live your your life that way from your professional career all the way on down you know to your kid i think that there's you know you'll never be you know worried about you know well it's a freeing way to be and i and i found that too it's just living living honestly and whatever it's like yeah you you if you feel that way and you're open to it or you, you speak your mind then then you know yeah. you can stand behind that but if you're over there shit talking or whatever and then you're in front of someone going oh no i just love everything to-. then it's like yeah then you're then you're chasing that and trying to cover yeah. that up all the time but i mean no one's i mean i'm not gonna fucking sit here and pretend that i'm you know you know uh, you know my you know, my moral compass isn't totally fucking fucked up or, you know, whatever. Like I got plenty of shit I do that I know is a super bummer to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's okay. You yeah. Because likewise, you know, you have, I mean, for me, this very minuscule version of like having a social responsibility to if people start saying things that I don't agree with, especially if it starts to associate with stuff that, you know, right. we do. Like yeah. I don't ever, but I don't ever want anybody to get the wrong idea. Of right, what, right. anything that we do as a band I mean like we have all this like you know our name sounds religious and we have like right. devils on shit and stuff like that but like I just don't fucking like you know yeah. like, that's all make believe anyway right. I know everybody doesn't feel like it's make believe so I don't particularly go after people like that you know with yeah. with uh, you know socially so it's like the same kind of thing like racism and religion <laughs> they're the same no I'm just kidding <laughs> Please don't, please don't put that on there like that. But it's like, it's just, you know, you're never going to get somebody who believes something to believe what you believe. Like, like right now, it's like you go on Facebook and you have all these opinions and you put all this shit up there. There's never going to be one person that reads that shit and goes like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to. I agree with every bit of that. Yeah. Like, I'm going to fucking. It's time to 180 this sh- my life. Like, <laughs> I'm going right off the deep end. Well, that's the shit that they used to claim back in the day with Marilyn Manson and shit like uh-huh. that. Like, oh, he's responsible for this. Get the fuck out of uh-huh. here. And what I've always found funny is is that idea that it, it's usually someone like Marilyn Manson or someone like yourself that has d- devil stuff equated with whatever you're playing or Black Sabbath or these mm-hmm. other bands. And it's usually those people that are just kind of taking the piss out of that thing yes. and, and they don't see it that way but it's you know in the wrong hands it can be viewed as oh they're devil worshippers or this and that and it's like almost most people that I've seen represent that for the for art or for whatever it is yeah. it's just maybe some sort of little fascination but not true belief in it well the crazy thing is yeah. if you want to get crazy <laughs> so you know Judas Priest and an Ozzy made people kill themselves and, and kill each other, right? Like, look, this is just, you know, sure. I'm, I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. This is how it used to be. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea. And, and nobody, and like, nobody could ever agree on that, right? Like, there were like people on one side saying, like, yes, that is happening, or no, that's not happening. Nowadays, 
somebody will take a fucking assault weapon and go into a Walmart and shoot a whole bunch of people and they will say the reason. Yeah. And people are going like, well, that's not the reason. You're like, no, no, dude said that he <laughs> exactly went in there what it was. to shoot. He's his had immigrants. enough of this shit. Yeah, exactly. and, yeah. and you're like, no, 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 this is different. It's different now. Yeah. Now it's not make believe stuff that, like, maybe it's that, maybe it's not. Yeah. No, that people are just going in and straight up doing this shit for real and saying why. And, and, News reports will be like, well, it's or like on Facebook, people are like, well, this isn't motivated by racism. You're like, no, 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 it is. It definitely was. Yeah, they said it. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like yeah, the kid well, didn't and, kill himself. And I think the, that's like the the proper form of deflection politically oh, yeah. because if you look at it in this way, if they have the exact reason, this person was clearly racist. The, yeah. the, the shit and 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 uh, and so if they have the exact reason, they know the problem. And then now they have to work on the solution, and the solution requires not taking money from certain, you know, sure. corporations and things that that yeah. push the envelope for that. So, so now you're turning it on them and saying, "Here's the answer. You got to go do something." It's like, no, no, no. We liked it a lot better yeah. when we could just have it be this Point make believe thing over right. here, and yeah. we could tur- take the take the attention off of us by saying, "Oh, Marilyn Manson or Ozzy I'm Osbourne not accountable. Or this. Nothing yeah. I'm yeah. doing could possibly be f- right. making this happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's all his fault." Yep. And you're so like, oh. it's like, no, it's cut and dry. It's yeah. yours. And then, and then well, that's the other weird thing. Yeah. Again, you know, we're going off, but I mean, like <laughs> with kids, when you have a kid, it's like you, you can, you, if you've been in your kid's life, you know, to an appropriate level, like where you actually pay attention to your kid and how your kid feels and how your kid is doing. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, it's almost like nature. You know the minute your kid is like off. You know what I mean? Right, like right. you know. So I can't imagine, especially as a parent, not realizing that my kid could get go walk into a public place with an assault weapon and open fire on. Well, yeah, and people. I would imagine those kids are, there isn't a great relationship at home. Anymore. Something right? Yeah, like there's, that's what sucks. Like that's whose fault it is. Like sorry if you if you need to point fingers, but also then yeah there. But there's, yeah, I don't know. That, and there is something in that kid, too. Yeah. I mean, like, it's not all, you know, your mother's fault that, you know, it's not all my mother's fault that I'm such a fucking mess. <laughs> like, you know, it's my yeah, fault, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a little bit of my dad, but yeah. I'll, no. I'll but, take some of that. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, yeah, you know, you're ultimately responsible for your actions, right? Yeah. And that's what's... That's and, I, what's and I think that we, we get away from that for sure, uh, of of not wanting to, you know, I mean, there's, there's situations where people overdose on drugs and you yeah. go, oh, it's the doctor. It's like, ah, oh, maybe it's the guy that took the drugs yeah. and died from it. Yeah. <laughs> you, maybe it's that person. He knew. Yeah. 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 yeah like, <laughs> yeah. He knew it was, there was a risk involved. Yeah. The fifth one, you know, <laughs> after the fifth one, after on the bottle, it says clearly take one a week. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, th- those are, those aren't suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> those are, that's what. <laughs> so, so after you had some of the, uh, yeah. the, the medical stuff, like where you were able to get back into playing yeah, I mean, and be on, on stage and know, play look, your guitar and I, do all the that? way I, you know, the way I see it again is like I don't know it's up to you right like you know if you have to be responsible for what you did you know and, and again it's like you know I have these you know I have all these people that I play in a band with you know Emily and John have been, we've been in this band together 20 you know 21 years and you know like I I just like I owe it to my wife and my kids to stay alive like I owe it to those two people you know because they've worked just as hard as yeah. me to have this you know and we're very lucky like every I want anybody to ever know that uh, every time I get to go on stage and play our songs for people like I'm the luckiest person I know because like that's a gift like a real gift from somewhere somewhere else that like anybody gives a shit right about yeah, yeah, anybody yeah. else and what they're doing you know whether it's a jackass movie or it's a band or it's a book or it's a movie like the fact that you can bring a bunch of people together and just to be stoked right yeah like you should always be grateful for that fact I feel yeah so anyway we had Psychofest booked in August that year. So I had the strokes in February. Not the band. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, not, just, yeah. yeah. not the band. The, the, the whatever. <laughs> uh, the condition. So we had Psychofest booked in August. And I remember, like, my left hand was weird. 
and I, you know, I remember thinking like I had that moment where I, you know, got home and got settled and whatever. And I was like, all right, well, I got to f- figure this out. You know, I sing and play guitar in the band. So I'm like, all right, well, you have to kind of like reprogram your brain to like make things muscle memory again. And I just did that for like a bunch of months. I just fucking sat in this room that we're in right now. And I just fucking played and played and played and played. And I just went through every one of our records and I relearned every song we have. Damn. And I, yeah, I just worked on it and worked on it until I was like, until it felt like muscle memory again. And you know, there's like certain days I f- don't feel like a hundred percent, but you know, then like you were saying, being hy- hypochondriac, like half the time I'm thinking I'm getting in my own head and just being like, Oh, I, I know how to do this. You're just fucking thinking about it too much yeah. kind of shit. But yeah, it's like, I'm on like, you know, I have an amazing cocktail of fucking designer fucking drugs now. You know, I, I laugh. I take seven pills in the morning and six at night. and None of them are fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, none not, of them were fun pills. Yeah, not you're, you're, you. You used up all your fun, buddy. <laughs> That's that. Yeah. I always <laughs> say that too. Like what, because of being sober now, I'm like I used all my partying up front, yeah. and then I had to. Now I don't get to use it anymore. Most people space it over time, mm-hmm. and uh, whoops. No, <laughs> it's right. You're, you're right though, and, and like you know, it's better for your kid. You know, that's how I look at it. Like you know, my kid yeah. does not have to see me be a fucking total mess. Yeah, just no, half of us. Yeah, that's a good part. Well, but that's crazy to think. So you had to basically retrain that muscle memory because of yeah. the stroke. And it was it it wasn't so much like even the playing part. It was more like the you know like the speech. Well, doing yeah. like two things at one, like you know doing a bunch. Of, I mean, oh, you know, yeah, not yeah, that yeah. I'm David Lee Roth or anything, but you have to like do something on stage. You can't just stand there. And yeah. so then you're like, you don't ever think about it when you've done it for a long time. Like, yo, oh, well, I'm singing, I'm playing, I gotta move. You know, like I gotta interact with people in the crowd you know you have to say things that make sense yeah. because like let's be honest being in a band and having to be the person that has the main microphone in front of you that's the hardest thing that's the closest i will ever come to being a stand-up comedian and fuck that is my <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. because yeah. that is the hardest thing is <laughs> talking to people and having them understand or laugh yeah. at it yeah it's like unless of course you're ozzy you can just <laughs> yeah and you say, I, we love you all or whatever yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. The, the stock lines yeah but i'm always impressed by like especially you know like phil anselmo is one of those guys like you know love him or hate him like you watch him work a crowd that guy can work a crowd you know Grohl's great at working a crowd like you see him do it and he'll he'll whip him you know he'll whip him up like crazy or like tom from slayer like all these guys that we grew up loving you know like yeah. you know lemmy's like the opposite you know lemmy said like four lines every motorhead show and half the time it was like you know we're motorhead when you know and we'll we kind of kick your ass or something you know, like it's like a line like yeah. that but like that's a that's the weirdest thing. So anyway, to go back to what you asked, like getting all that shit back has to become one big moment, you know. And and again, you don't, you know, like you have the other people in the in the band too, and you don't want anybody in the band to feel like, well, you know, you're not a hundred percent. Like I know at that Psycho show, I was definitely not a hundred percent. Like I was maybe operating at like sixty percent. Shit, yeah. And that was only on like four songs. But no, it was like, you know, you felt it. But now I mean I think you know, I think we're great again. You know, I, again, luckily we've been playing you know, three of us have been playing together for so long. And then Scott, you know, you know, Reader was in Caius and, and you know, to me he's like the greatest bass player like ever. So yeah. like he he a bad night for him is my best night ever. So it's like, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. As so far as being yeah. supported by great musicians, we're fine. Yeah. So I don't know. I, you know, like I said, you know, somebody asked me the other day, you know, you work on all these movies and you're always doing this shit and you, you know, consult for people and then you write songs and you do this and that. Like, I never think about any of that. Like, I just think about like, if I stop, then I'm in bad shape. You know, like you, you know, you're yeah. doing all this stuff, you're doing this podcast, you do all this shit. I know that we have that similar personality trait where it's like, you don't want to stop. You can't, or yeah. the bad things go on in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, yeah. that's a thing that you'll never be able to explain to somebody who is just waiting to get a pension. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, like, those are the things, those are the, that's the misfire. Like, you know, somebody who's waiting for their retirement to hit a point where they can just not work anymore, that's different than everybody in this room, including this guy. Yeah. You know, like, we don't do that. Like, I know him too, because anybody who sets up cameras is the same person. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're never going to stop the thing. I mean, look, 
I'll I'll tell you. Well, that's Cossack over there. I mean, he's got this yeah. awesome project that I can't talk about because he's in the works of it. But he's always got something yeah. going. Always doing some other thing. Like I wheels mean, are turning. Yeah, there's always a project going, and yeah. And why way. the fuck not? Like that's why. Yeah. You know that's why. Like that. Like I don't know. Like <laughs> who wants a f- fuck a pension? You know, like <laughs> sure I'm, I'm taking sh- away from you at some point anyway. Like I feel like all that shit. I remember when the four hundred one k thing happened and somebody was like, "Oh, it's gone now." Yeah. Like at the at the two thousand eight or nine. Yeah. Like, oh, they're all gone. I'm like, what do you mean it's gone? Oh, you did the thing that all those people told you to do that was going to help you when later, and now yeah, That's now you gone. don't have that anymore. <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on. I listened to you for a reason. <laughs> 30 fucking years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's... Well, that's the other trick, right? Like, in, in our business, like, we all know, like, here today, gone tomorrow. You know, like, I was working at, with Disney, you know, at Disney for the last few years. And, and you know, you get to this weird point where it's like you feel like you're on this winning football team because everything you do, it makes a billion dollars. And then... Having been in the business for so long, you know, like all of us have, it's like you, you start to realize like this doesn't like, cause just cause they give a shit today doesn't mean they give a shit next week. Nope. Like yeah. they can easily, they, they can not give a shit as much as they give a shit. Yeah. And the more you exploit people's nostalgia, the quicker it's going to become boring. Like everything right now is just like, well, I love that because I used to love it when I was 10. You know, as you look over at a bunch of Kiss dolls and, and fucking yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. robots. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, like I, I'm I'm atypical, you know, right now because I don't really watch that stuff like Marvel stuff and, and Star Wars stuff. Like I don't I, I can't I can't love it like I did when I was a kid. I don't really see and like even if my kid loves it it's like let her love it because she loves it not because I love it yeah you know like right now my kid's super fucking into the Beatles and you know she says weird shit like she said to my <laughs> wife I can't wait to go to heaven so because all the Beatles will be there then <laughs> yeah. that's my kid in a fucking nutshell <laughs> yeah but like she you know like yeah sure I play music in the house and she gravitates to wherever she gravitates to I don't sit her down and be like you have to love this because I love it yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, if she wants to love that, that's cool. And I think that, like, right now, I feel like we're doing a disservice to our kids by shoving all the shit that we grew up with down their throats. Yeah. Because it doesn't inspire them to do their th- next thing. Well, I love that idea that you said of, like, you expose them to whatever yeah. it is and that whole slew Just of Just be it. you. And then they find themselves yeah. in that. And, that. and that I think that was, that was true of myself and I'm sure of you as you're growing up. Yeah. It's that... There was something specific to you that you heard musically, or you saw a show, and then that was like, oh, this mm-hmm. fucking lit my fire, and now I'm going in that direction. And uh, we were sitting with uh, Kevin Llewellyn, who's an artist. He's yeah. an incredible artist, and we were sitting with him a couple days back. And uh, same thing, he walked into a museum at like eight years old, and and like and Rembrandt yeah. struck that dude on some it crazy blew, level. Blew his mind. And then his whole life has been dedicated to art. And and to me, I'm like, I walked right past that Rembrandt on a yeah. field trip and was like, ah, who's, uh-huh. you know, whose dick do I got to suck to whatever. But, you <laughs> know, like that, yeah, yeah, that was my my version of that was like, I want to throw shit on that thing. And, you know, and hey, and, man, art, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, yeah. it brings different things out in different yeah. people. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, Someone to throw shit at it. Yeah, Some people are blown away. Well, yeah. to me, to, go, to to that point, to me, when I would see, like, I am, we're so lucky to have. I'm so lucky to have grown up in the '70s and the '80s when bands, you know, to me, when bands became like larger, like so much larger than life. I mean, not that Hendrix wasn't larger than life, but it wasn't the same kind of thing as like Alice Cooper or Kiss, where those were my superheroes growing up. Yeah. Like I saw Kiss, and I'm like, wait, they're real, but. They're superheroes, but I could be that. Yes, and that was like you saw Van Halen. Grab that, yeah. Yeah, you can be it. Yeah, and that's what now I I just feel like I I hope I hope that like kids get inspired because that's what this is all about. Like I, you know, in a dorky way, I kind of want to say like I don't really take on any projects anymore unless I feel like I'm going to inspire you know kids or at least young people to like be fucking awesome. Yeah. Like I don't want to be like something that's just feeding a machine and you know making everybody stupider and making everybody less motivated to be incredible cuz like 
fucking even your dumbest idea could be the most amazing thing ever like every person yeah i feel right like. well because again that's that that's that easy path if you just do what mm-hmm. you you know will placate to whatever yeah but yeah you gotta you gotta try that new stuff and i and i think it, it's hard it's it would be hard to be who you are uh to or who i am yeah. to try to not to, to not do that you would be in that world of like completely bored you almost get depressed because you're not you got to try yeah. and go in new directions and i've met you know we all know the people that have been doing the same fucking thing like for a thousand years and half the time if it's like i'll see something in somebody that'll be like i'll be like oh shit you have the thing you just no one ever told you that you could also do the thing yeah 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 like you didn't have to just fucking write scripts for programming to make yeah. more shit happen at one time or I don't know whatever the fuck normal people do for a living dude I mean they, to go back to the artist dude he was the guy that they were um, a consultant and he was dra- doing all the drawings for the Marvel movies mm-hmm. and for uh, Ki- Pirates of the Caribbean mm-hmm. he was doing that stuff and was like I don't want to do it. And he, so he yeah, did, did all, art. yeah, he did all the concept art. They were going to put his name in the thing. He's like, can you take my name out of the credits? He got his name out of the credits, quit and went back to doing the fine art. And that, and he's actually buddies with Nikki six too. Yeah, I know. I know who Kevin is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he went back and just did what he needed to do. And basically kind of decided to walk away from what would be, the easy job of, uh-huh. of Marvel. Well, going back this, like, to the, I was saying, I, cause I, I, you know, I always totally get tangent, you know, I go off on a tangent, but you know, right now the media business is built on this winning football team mentality. Right. So like, yeah. and I never played sports. So forgive me if any of my sports analogies make no fucking sense and give you know, <laughs> call it when you hear you know it. me <laughs> just running around with a pig skin. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, like you get, when you're, when you're like, when you're on the winning team or your school is the winning team, you get you your ego grows. Like you just get this ego. Yeah, yeah. And that ego trickles down from like all the way from the quarterback all the way down to like even like the, the lowliest the of the nerd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the nerd kid at school. The you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like I might not be getting laid ever, but like man, my fucking I'm on the my football team's the winning team. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone's ego gets, you know, like inflated. <laughs> yeah. And then you start to like, you know, then the quarterback graduates and then this other person that's key to the team graduates. And then over time, a couple people graduate, more people graduate and the people that are coming in aren't quite as good <laughs> yeah. because you already had these people. And like to me, like especially with like Disney right now, you can't just go buy other people's awesome shit and slap your fucking logo on it and pretend it's yours. Well, we'll try. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you can't, like, it, you're not fooling anyone forever. Like, yeah. people know where Star Wars came from. And people know where Marvel came from. Like, Stan Lee made up Marvel. Like, lest we forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking Sammy Hagar wasn't the original fucking singer of Van Halen. Right. Like, no matter how... Van Hagar. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's, it's, it's not the same thing. Right. Like, it's, it's an imitation of the thing right like, so and and eventually you know nobody wants the imitation anymore they just want the real thing well the imitation is great for the first little taste of it yes and then once you yeah, yeah. when you then where's it, the next star wars or where's yeah. the next marvel where's like like, the like when jj abrams made that the the one star wars yeah that when the song came on and the feeling of his that was nostalgic for me, so it was yeah, cool, of and I was like, "Oh, this is rad," because it does remind you of your childhood. But then now that it's so much, I'm like, I'm over it. And then you're having a kid, and do you want your kid only to have the same shit that you fucking had? Like, <laughs> yeah, no. How about you develop your own like awesome new shit? Yeah. And 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 the, and all these people that like us that are responsible for content, which by the way is the worst fucking thing, couldn't cheapen what we do more. Yeah. Calling it content as if it's just something that fills something. Like, yeah, fuck <laughs> that's, that's you. all they're like, looking for. That's the most insulting thing <laughs> yeah. to anybody who makes stuff. Like, 
You know, you can call Jackass least common denominator. Like, I'm sure it has been. Same as heavy metal, trust me. Like, fucking, you know, like, yeah. you can call it the least common denominator all you want. But you know what? That, you, it's a thing that was made up by all you guys and fucking imitated oh, poorly yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over and over and over again to the point where, like, now there's like a whole bunch of like it's it's a you you invented a genre right, you know what yeah. i mean and like those now it's time for somebody else to invent like that's your guys's thing you guys do that and yeah invent a new genre <laughs> yeah but you guys keep your thing because you're the ones who did it and now it's up to the people that are influenced by you to go make a new genre and that's what doesn't happen anymore. Like everybody's just like perpetuating, you know, fucking what's already there to the point where it just ends up getting watered down like a Han Solo movie. Yeah. You know, it's like and everybody's like, well, now they're going to have a streaming thing and then we're going to get all this new stuff. You're like, no, you're going to get the old stuff as a new thing. Yeah. Recycled. That's not new. We need new. <laughs> I thought that yeah. fucking getting this president, man, I thought every young kid was going to go fucking pick up that shitty guitar in their garage and make a lot of noise, and no. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, like, they figured like out we how were to do saying makeup earlier, on, there's, on de there's, definitely, yeah. there's definitely content out there to grab. <laughs> yeah. Influence, like, or, like inspiration. Like, yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah, can, yeah. There's plenty of inspiration flying around right now to get <laughs> it's you all going. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yet. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. with that is there inspiration for another uh fireball uh, yeah of record course or? yeah i mean like you know like i said before when's I, the last one you put out not not that long ago 17 right, right yeah, after yeah. i got you know after i had all the health shit i like i immediately i we immediately start i started writing and you know like that last the last record we made was kind of like that you know it was kind of like the thing where i was just thinking to myself like is this you know if i'm gonna put effort into like you know what like what rehab looks like to me it's going to be that like making yeah. a record i know how to do that i know what the process is like i can you know i don't want to say i could do it with my eyes closed but you know what i'm saying yeah you can you do know. it with one half of your body yeah yes. exactly like, I'm, not, I'm not saying this but like it's like if somebody asks you to shift something up your ass you're comfortable with yeah, that now it <laughs> <laughs> you know it's fine yeah yeah <laughs> somebody wants you to take a slap in the face and you're all right yeah. with it. you know what that couple feels of ball like. kicks we got it yeah, yeah I'm on to it. it's the same thing uh -huh. i got you know like it feels comfortable yes so yeah I, again like yeah I don't, you only need half your body to sing uh but yeah no it was like you know yeah I, I i find it therapeutic i still enjoy it we all get together you know like i it's never a chore you know i never i'm never like oh fuck we gotta go practice or oh shit we gotta go right like you know we all do it together still like we all still like each other and it's it'll, and that's it, huge man after yeah. 21 years that's it'll that's, it'll go as long as any that's rare <laughs> yeah if somebody wants to you know pay for us to do it you know let's be honest you know it takes a lot because we're not a lot of money but it takes a lot of effort yeah so it's like if somebody wants to pay us to do that i'll i'll go do it like we're going to belgium and the netherlands and this is where emily will get really mad at me we're playing a festival over there called into the void and then i desert fest i think is the other one and then we're doing one in Sheffield in England, and then we're doing a headlining show in London. Like, that's all September, October. So, you know, like, we get to do awesome shit like that or play yeah. the Clutch Festival or, like, we, you know, we did a show in town last week to warm up for this, these, these, you know, Euro dates coming up. But, like, it's, it's awesome. I mean, dude, don't get me wrong. I don't, it's not like I don't look at the videos and the pictures afterwards and go, like, why is that dad? think he can fucking still appeal to people like that's all i see oh yeah yeah it's you good know. it's good self-loathing yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. but that's been like yeah when i was 19 i was that's that, every right? one of us yeah. <laughs> anyone that anyone that's doing anything and putting it out in front of has to hate themselves in some way exactly no one <laughs> understands that unless you do that like, yeah, unless you yeah. put it out there uh -huh, yeah. you don't you you have never witnessed self -loathing. It's like what, whatever you're going to critique and say is horrible i think it's 10 times worse than you do exactly <laughs> yes yeah. If you think that you're, you, the shit smells that you just put on it, you should see it when I'm done with it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So we'll do. You know, we'll we, we don't have like immediate plans, but I know after we get back from those dates, we'll start probably writing again. And you know, I I I, I feel like there's like this, and then I promise I'll shut up. But I I feel like there's this like someone hasn't figured out the formula yet for how to do this now. Like in other words, do you just 
continually put out music so that you know you're always like got the the machine flowing like in other words do you record two songs at a time and just keep putting them out or do you do like these whole like do you can continue to do it the classic whole albums way I just don't I don't I can't figure out I haven't tapped in yet to what people actually want I know well it's kind of crazy too though because you think about like okay back in the day the Beatles you you know your Mm -hmm. daughter loves the Beatles like they would put out a single and then a Mm b-side and then it became the albums when the industry became the huge thing and then now it's almost back to the what it used to be and it's like the history repeats itself sort of mentality like cycle they had it right then and then you know and then the green came in and it was like we could get way more yeah. money for we a can whole... package it yeah, yeah yeah and we know that only one of these songs is the songs they want right. or the song they want but whatever you know and and then the concept albums became so cool because yeah, 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 live yeah, albums yeah. everything yeah they but now yeah i don't know i can't you know maybe next time you have us on the podcast you know we can i can explain you know because maybe at that point we had figured out the formula but i doubt it <laughs> i'm too old yeah yeah <laughs> i just I, 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 yeah. I think it's just keep on uh, yeah, doing do it, it do it the way yeah, you do it yeah keep on rocking and, and keep uh doing shows and... yeah i mean you know somebody's got to play guitar so kids actually you know and young people actually know that you can you know do something and actually become good at it yeah as opposed to wanting it to be just instant Dude, I know. Well, well, that, I mean, that's what's that's what's cool is is the, is the endless opportunity with the guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking about it, dude. I would love like because I I barely fart around with a guitar, and I would love it if you would show me like what like one of one of one, like a Firewall Ministry song, like an easier chord, and then just show me how to play it real quick. You want to do that on here? Yeah. If you can't play our songs, you shouldn't play the guitar right so then we'll yeah. prove right no, now that i, I mean, shouldn't play the my, guitar <laughs> my shit's easy oh i gotta get amps for us then hold on let me think about this can we cut yeah and then do it okay yeah that's better i can't believe jess never taught you how to play anything i well or darren for uh darren da- darren taught me uh close yet far oh right yeah yeah all right, so check Hell it out. Yeah. I set it up for you so that, see that switch on there? If you push that all the way to the floor, there. Right now, trick number one to Fireball Ministry songs. Okay. We are always, this string is always tuned super down, so it's easier to play. Okay. And everything is about easy. Yes. <laughs> So, Keep it simple, stupid. So, like, normally we are just... <laughs> I'm old and don't want to work. So, your normal, like, power chords like this, right? Well, with us, on the bottom two, it's just one. Okay. So, you'll feel that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> so, th- you'll, you might know the song. So, if you do... Yeah, yes, yes. Like that. When, are we, when are we get when are we taking this to the stage? Yeah. That's my question. I'm coming on tour. Let's go. Okay. It's so, so fucking easy. As soon as I start to try to sing, it goes. Yeah, but if you do it like this. If I was listening, yeah, yeah, yeah then. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a good trick. If I was listening. Yeah. Damn, I'm such a rock star right now, Rick. Here's the... uh... Oh, you can't hear it with that. That one. The close yet far.